So one of the questions that I get very, very often, as you can imagine, is how do I become a great shooter? Well, first I think about what defines a great shooter? And obviously, it's the ability to make shots in every situation that you're going to face. From a shooter standpoint, if I'm thinking about what is the most important thing for me to create a consistent, repeatable shot? I'll give you that I'll give you that statement in just one second. So I've gone through a lot of research and study to come up with what I think is the single most important thing to being a great shooter and shooting the ball consistently in every situation. Players are faced with a lot of different situations when they're shooting. And because of the nature of defense, how we're catching passes, how we're moving, we must be able to try and create a shot that repeats. Now, when I say, when you hear repetition, the first thing we think about is our practice habits. A lot of times we're thinking about how many shots do I need to get shoot up a day? How many things do I need to do to create a habit? How many shots, how many shots, how many shots, how many hours? It's not a matter of time. The repetition part, and I think is the most important use of the word repetition for basketball, is how do you create the best version of your shot to repeat over and over and over. In order to do that, we have to have consistency of a number of different things. We need to have the preparation of our shot be as close to the same as we can every single time we shoot. We need to have the path of the ball travel the same, the best we can over and over and over. And then we need to be able to release the ball in a specific manner in a way that repeats almost identically from one to the next. Now, the only way that I've found, and I've studied kinesiology, biomechanics, physics, geometry, all kinds of different things to be able to figure out what is the one thing to focus on to create that great repeating motion of your shot. I've been blessed with some connections with some high level technology people that created a wearable that I actually put on. You're gonna see some overlays of data of me shooting the basketball. And what you're gonna see is what the data tells us in terms of how closely we can repeat. But what we found, if we can boil it all down to one thing to create a repeating consistent motion, what is it gonna be? And I finally came to the conclusion that to me, it's vertical acceleration. Vertical acceleration, obviously, is the ball moving up and towards your release in a consistent, accelerating manner. You've heard me talk about before not stopping the ball. We want to create space in the vertical plane, being able to jump up in the air or get rid of it quickly. All of these help you be able to repeat your shot almost identically. Now, why does it help you repeat that shot? Let's think about that for a second. In the old days, when I learned, I was told, for a jump shot, jump up in the air and shoot it at the peak of your jump. Now, if I give that some real thought, if I'm trying to shoot at the very top of my jump and I'm not exactly precise, what I'm doing is I may, let's say this is the top of my jump, and as I'm moving up to that point, if I release it right at the top, the energy that I've created with me jumping is dissipating as I'm slowing down. If I let it go earlier, I have more energy. But if I miss, if I go to my peak and I hold it and I'm moving on the way down, I have a completely different amount of energy to transfer to the, best, to the shot. When I'm talking about vertical acceleration, it gives us the most margin for error and the best possible uh, situation to create consistency. So I'm eliminating variables. If I'm here at the top and I'm trying to let it go just before the peak of my jump, I can get close to the peak of my jump and still have the ball release, and I can let it go on the way up, and I'm going to have a similar energy each time I release the shot. Vertical acceleration helps us with being consistent, being able to repeat over and over and over the same amount of force to be able to drive the ball to the shot. Now I'm gonna explain a couple other things too. The use of centrifugal force and how this is gonna help you increase the range of your shot 
and improve the consistency of your shot. Centrifugal force is the force of momentum that keeps an object moving in a straight line. Now we talk about that raise of the ball, we want to try and raise it up in a straight line to get it to where we want to release the ball. If I'm moving the ball side to side, obviously I have a lot of variables that I need to control. But if I raise the ball quickly and in a straight line, I have the ability to use centrifugal force in my favor. So the faster I raise it up, the more centrifugal force I have. Therefore, I have a force that's helping me keep the ball moving in a straight line. Obviously, that's very important. We talk about goal number one to shoot the ball great is to be able to shoot it straight. Vertical acceleration helps us with that. Vertical acceleration gives us more centrifugal force to use in our favor. Now obviously that's going to become important if I want to extend my range. I can just add more vertical acceleration. Now think about this in, in, in the reverse. How does it make me inconsistent? Vertical acceleration, if I'm using it well, always helps us be more consistent. The more times I'm stopping the ball or rerouting the ball, and in a realistic situation, when there's defense around, I may have to move the ball from side to side. I may have to change my body angle. That's fine. But the goal at the very end is always to be able to accelerate to the release. That creates our consistency. So using centrifugal force by speeding the ball up is that's where you get that momentum shot. We try to prepare, raise the ball, and jump through. And it takes the energy from our body and places it into the ball. That's vertical acceleration in a visual. You'll see some shots on, on film here of great players shooting from farther and farther and farther. And the one commonality that you see is the ball doesn't stop. Once they get prepared, they're raising it and jumping through it, and there's always an acceleration to release. If you're holding the ball at the top, it's very difficult to be able to repeat and add the same force each time because we no longer have energy to transfer. We have to create it from a different place. So when we talk about vertical acceleration, I want you to understand how do you create it? If you think about how I talked about shooting in terms of passing it to the basket, when I take the ball and I simply make that pass, it's very obvious that when I let that pass go, it's accelerating. It accelerates forward. So when I move the ball up here and I, and I use that same motion, you'll see a consistent acceleration. Now, as you look at the diagrams, what you'll see is, I think, about 14 or 15 shots where the data is overlaid upon itself. One of them, the player is a beginning basketball player in high school, and it looks like a spider web. And it shows the number of inconsistencies. And then when you watch the overlay of the 15 shots that I put up, you start to see what people know as muscle memory, but more importantly, repetition of, of an identical move for a shot. If you stop the ball anywhere along the way, if you move it in an angle that changes, it's very, very difficult to repeat that angle exactly from one shot to the next. If we're constantly accelerating, you give yourself a chance to create that repetitive motion, that consistent motion that you can learn how to control. Vertical acceleration is hugely important to be able to create range, consistency, and being able to repeat the best version of your shot. So when you go out and practice, how do you feel that? What things can you do to practice vertical acceleration? Some of the drills that you've seen us do are built right around that. The bounce through drill, where I take the ball, bounce it off the floor, and jump through to, and let it go before the peak of my release. Even dribble hop shot, the working on momentum shot, even when I do roll ups. You'll see the ball roll up my body and accelerate into the shot. Now, some situations, when we're jumping up in traffic and people are defending and I have to move the ball around, that's a different, that's a scoring situation that you have to make up through practice, athleticism. But understanding in order to create that consistent shooting motion for the free throw line, for three point shots, things on the move, keep working on that vertical acceleration. How do we get there? Go through the process of preparing, connecting, 
getting things in order, transferring your body's energy into the ball, and the better that you get at it, the more consistent your vertical acceleration will be. How important do I think it is? I think it's the most important thing to be able to create a repetitive, consistent shooting motion. How do you create it? Use your imagination. Once you understand what it feels like, once you understand what it looks like, it's your job as the player to be able to create that skill with understanding why you're doing it and then how to create that vertical acceleration. As we jump, we want to have everything in order so whatever we're doing, that's why we talk about energy transfer, whatever we're doing going up, we need to take that and put it into the ball. That's where we get that vertical acceleration. And understand too, in different situations, you're going to see it slightly differently. The closer I get to the ball, or to the basket, the less vertical acceleration I need. But if I'm going to play in space and jump up in, in traffic, you're going to see the ball raised up higher so I can create space against the defense. When I'm out in the three-point land, I can get the, ball, get, re get the ball ready earlier, get ready or get rid of it quicker from a lower point of release. So if we keep working on that one motion and your ability to release it anywhere along the way, using that vertical acceleration, you'll be able to create a super, super consistent shot in just about every situation you can think of. Watch the video, take a look at the data, go out there, be creative, send in your questions, and we will get you on the path of creating a consistent, long-range, powerful, repetitive jump shot.